I wonder if there's Mother's Day surprises going on at your homes. Tell me about what's happening. It feels weird doing church from home. It doesn't feel like anything like church, except that we're doing an online church. It doesn't look like church. What could we do to make this feel more like church? Maggie, that's an interesting point. Here's our candle. And that's what really makes me notice that this time is different than everything else that's going on in my house. This time is different and set aside for us especially to come together. We've been coming together like this for nine weeks. If you look at the calendar on the wall, look up here. I've got Easter, uh, Christmas is way at the top. We were still meeting at church for many weeks after Christmas. Who notices, raise your hand and wave to me if you notice where my pink spot is on the calendar. That pink spot was the last time we all gathered together on March 8th when we were together at the building. And you can look and count the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Sundays that we've been meeting like this in my family room, sometimes over in my living room. Maggie, you look like you're dying to say something and I want to hear it. I have two things. Um, the first thing is I have a real candle, real lighted. And, and the second thing is, if God loves us, did he send this? Like, did he send the coronavirus? Because how in the world did it even start? How in the world did the coronavirus start? Like, because you know it started in, like, the animals started getting it, and then people, because, but how did the animals get it? How did that thing get it? How did that thing get it? How did it first start? What does your dad say about that? He said, <laughs> ask Mary Ellen. Um, is it, um, I think I have an answer to that. Okay. Uh, Mary um, uh, Maggie's question. Okay, Maggie. I think that God loves us, but he wants us to learn from this virus, so he sent I like what you're saying, Micah. God loves us, and he's inviting us to learn from this virus. And I think one the bats that they ate had the coronavirus, and then the person that started eating the bat had, um, got the coronavirus from the bat, and then people start, like, they all go to the same market, the same um, grocery store, like, they go everywhere around China, maybe, like, together or apart. There you go. I think that it started by somebody eating the bat, like Katie said, but it st but the place it started was probably an illegal place in China. That's what Daddy told me. That's what my dad told me. Yeah. And, and the other thing that I want to say is that I read on the news that on, on my papa's phone that my grandpa's phone, I call him Papa, and he said on the news that they finally got one person, they got the um, the vaccine for it, and the only person who has a vaccine, it's not even a person, it's a monkey. I'm going to transition into our story, and I wonder if our story answers Maggie's question in a little bit, even as she's waving beautiful flowers. Um, those are big questions, and Maggie asks the biggest question, and maybe it's on our minds, maybe we haven't thought of it yet, but the question she's asking is why? What do we know about God that would help us understand why? Why he would let this happen? When we have questions and we want to ask God things, what do we do? We go to his word. We try to come close to Jesus and come close to God. And one of the ways we come close to him 
is by reading his word. Today, we were going to start reading and telling some of the stories that happened after Jesus rose from the dead. Thomas was with them, and Thomas is another famous story. We hear the story of doubting Thomas. Thomas is the apostle who came close to Jesus and said, I need to see the holes in your hands if I'm going to really believe this is you, Jesus. Jesus reached out his hands and he showed him the holes in his hands. And then Jesus said, blessed are those who believe who haven't seen. Most of us believe and we have not seen. We haven't seen Jesus and touched his hands, but we've been given the gift of believing without seeing. I wonder what it's like for you guys to believe without seeing. And I wonder if that helps us with Maggie's question. And that's my wondering today, wondering about believing and not seeing at the same time. Charlotte, did you have your hand raised to share in the wondering? I can't remember. So, um, the Holy Spirit is, it's, the Holy Spirit goes into everyone's heart after he, um, like ascended, right? I wonder if this wondering about believing and not seeing is a little bit of an answer to your question. How? It doesn't have to do with anything. It doesn't have to do with anything. It's, it's a dot, they're two dots, they don't feel connected yet. Well, sometimes I like to remember all the things that are true. It's true that God loves us. And it's true that he's, he loves us as human beings who make choices and make decisions. They call that free will. He loves people to be fully human. And when we make choices, we often make mistakes in those choices. Does that change how God loves us? If we choose poorly? No. Nope. If we sin? No. Okay, Micah has his hand raised for reals. Micah? Um, I have a big book about bugs. That could help us. Thanks, Micah. Well, that's so. all I have. Maggie, I think the, the answer to your question is a complicated one and a simple one at the same time. God loves us and we have coronavirus right now. Yeah, but if, if God is helping us, did he send it or did he not send the coronavirus? God did not send the coronavirus. He didn't send it. When it became, he did allow it to happen, just like he allows us to make bad choices. There's times when you slugged somebody. He could have sent the Holy Spirit to wrap your arms down and prevent you from slugging the person, and he didn't. He let you go ahead and slug him. He allowed the coronavirus to occur and to spread. He didn't stop it. But just as he gave you the ability to say, I'm sorry I hit you, and he gave the, you the ability to next time realize, uh, I'm not gonna hit that person. He's gonna give us the ability to overcome. Yeah. Cicely, did you have your hand up? How did? How? I think um, this is going to like, the coronavirus is like a challenge for us. 
I think you're onto something, Hal. Say more. Like, um, so like it's a challenge for, so we don't get coronavirus. Yeah, there's a challenge. We're finding ourselves making choices as we live with this challenge.